Five years ago, Siam and Great Britain had a conflict concerning the frontier line among both countries. It was manifest that Siam had been in the wrong. After every reparation, the British representative stated that he was satisfied and the past should be forgotten. The King of Siam, to show his gratitude, sent the Queen a present, worthy of your royalty, a wet elephant. Suddenly, a ship was fitted out and in due time, we arrived in New York Harbor and placed my royal charge in admirable quarters in Jersey City so I could rest a little. All went well during a fortnight, then my calamities began. The white elephant was stolen. I was called up at dead of night and informed of this fearful misfortune. Late as it was, I flew to New York and got a policeman to conduct me to the headquarters of the detective force. Fortunately, I arrived just in time. The celebrated Inspector Blunt asked me to a seat and said calmly, Allow me to think, to think a moment, please. This is no ordinary case. Nothing can be accomplished in the streets of mine without tricks and minute methods. He took a pen and some paper and started to make many words questions. Believe me, I would never think that those questions would be really necessary to find a white elephant. He also asked me a photo. I gave him one, he examined it critically and said, this is not a very picture, that is unfortunate and is calculated to mislead for of course he doesn't usually have in this disposition. He touched his bell and asked this assistant to make 50,000 copies of the photograph and mail them with described circulars. So after he said it would be necessary to offer a reward of $25,000, he explained it was a difficult business and there were a thousand avenues of escape and opportunities of concealment. Inspector Blood was for sure a busy man. The better I knew him, the more I liked him. He made more questions about the white elephant and I got deeply hopeful. He even asked me what the elephant likes eating. I answered and I tried to include as many details as Inspector Blunt asked me to do. Inspector Blunt was silent and thoughtful for a moment. We shall find the elephant, he said. I shook him warmly by the hand and thanked him. Next morning it was all in the newspapers, in the smallest detail. It even had additions, there were 11 of these theories, and they covered all the possibilities. In this single fact shows what independent thinkers detectives are. I deposited a considerable sum of money with the inspector to meet current expenses, and sat down to wait for news. We were expecting the telegrams to begin to arrive at any moment now. I said I thought it ought to be offered to anybody who would catch the elephant. Telegrams began to get from several states, talking about the trail of destruction that the elephant caused. After 14 telegrams from Bakers, Taylorville, Connor Point, Arrowville, Sage Carnes, Glovers, Hongansport, Brighamport, and 15 days later, I was called to go to the office and Inspector Blanche asked me to bring the money. When I arrived, Blanche said that he has found the elephant. I gave him the we were and asked to see the elephant. Our noble profession is dedicated. Here is your elephant. Many people came to watch what was happening. Baskets of shampoo were opened and congratulations were continuous and enthusiastic. Many voices murmured, look at him, just the king of the profession. The divide of the $50,000 made great pleasure. And the chief also made a little speech in which he said, enjoy boys, you were not for the detective profession dying fame. So ended that marvelous episode of the stole elephant. Compromise cost me $100,000. My detective expenses were $42,000 more. I am a ruined man and a wonder on the earth. But my admiration for that man, whom I believe it to be the greatest detective the world has ever produced, remains in dim to this day. And we so remain to the end. 